Hi, this video is going to help with uh, systems of three with three variables. Make sure this is going to. Oh, I guess that's this. Oh, I was just checking if it was going to come through a little more clear. But OK, so let's look at a couple examples of some systems with three variables because they get a little confusing. So here's my first example. This is actually out of the book, but it's got two X minus Y plus Z equals. So notice that if you have three equations and you have three letters that you don't know, X, Y, Z, and all the other problems that we were doing, you had an X and a Y and two equations. So you had two variables, two equations. That's how it has to work. So three variables, then you have three equations. Here's your first one. Uh, minus Z equals 11 and my last one is 4x plus y minus c. And this one's like an easier one so I'll do an easier one and a harder one. So what I first do is I have x, y, and z. I can't solve the three together. I have to stop and pair two together and two together and eliminate a letter. So basically I need to eliminate the same letter in both two sets. So I am going to pair, um, let's call this equation one, two, and three. I'm going to start with pairing one and two and look how easy it is to pair those two and get rid of z. So if I pair these first two, there's a plus one z and a minus one z. Well, if we did elimination, those would be gone and I'd have an equation with an x and a y. So super easy. Also, a one and three would be really easy to pair together too because again, if I add plus z and a minus z, I get a zero. Um, I also could have easily eliminated uh, the y's or a different letter. I am just looking at the z's because they're all ones and they have plus and negative. So let's pair one and two together. So one and two. So we're just going to write those down and we're going to eliminate the z's. That's what I have chose. Uh, one and two, again, we could have chose something else. And then I'm going to use elimination. You could use substitution. Um, typically, elimination is the easiest method. So remember, that's where you just take and you add them down. And sometimes you have to times by something to be able to add. And you want a letter to eliminate or go to zero. So if I do this, if I add these down, 2x plus 1x is 3x. Negative 1y plus 3y is a positive 2y. 1z minus 1z is 0, so I'm going to just write my equals. And 11 and 4 are going to make 15. So here's our new equation. It does not have a z. That's what I want for the next step, too. I want to pair, oops, I don't want that to go too far, two other equations and, and eliminate the z. So I'm going to pair 1 and 3. And again, that's just because plus z and negative z, I don't even have to multiply by anything. They're all set up pretty. So the first one is 2x minus y plus z equals 4. And the third one is 4x plus y minus z equals 14. And again, we're adding them together. So I'm going to add 4 and 2 make 6x. The y's eliminate here and the z's. That's kind of cool. And then 14 and 4 make 18. I can actually find the x by dividing both sides by 6. And I already see the x value. So that's why I said I got to show you two equations. Because this one, the y's and z's eliminated. So this one's really already we have x. So we could plug that x into this equation to find y. Then we take both of those and plug it into any of those and we can find z. So we're almost done. We're to the substitution idea now. Um, so I'm going to plug this one into this one. So this is just substitution. Uh, so I'd have 3 times 3 plus 2y equals 15. So 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2y equals 15. So then you're going to take your 15 and you're going to minus 9 and get 6. So you have 2y equals 6. Divide by your 2 and y is 3. So I've now found x and y. And we're going to substitute again. Um, I'll just use the first equation. It really doesn't matter from the original. You need any of the originals. But I know x 
is 3, and I know y is 3, so plus z equals 4. I just do a little swoopy on my z so it doesn't look like a 2. So 2 times 3 is 6, minus 3 plus z equals 4. 6 minus 3 is 3, plus z equals 4. Subtract that 3 over to the 4, and I get z is 1. So my answer is x, y, z, and if you have to put those in my math lab, typically it'll give like a set bracket saying it's a set of answers, and it'll go x, y, z with commas in between. Sometimes it'll say x, you put in the answer, then z, then y. It just, it kind of depends on if it's a word problem or how they're asking for that answer. So that one was easier only because that second step had two that eliminate. Um, so my ne next example, uh, this example, making sure this one was harder. <laughs> this example doesn't um, work as pretty, right? We've got to show you some harder ones. So this is my second example. Um, and I think that's, they, they have some by substitution but really that's your preference. I don't really mind either way. It kind of substitution is the easiest to use if um, you have that method, you have a little bit prettier equations. Okay, so let's do this one. So this one will make us do this extra step in it. Uh, plus y, three, as long as I write it down right, right? Seven and negative x plus 2y, what, right, was plus, nope, that's a minus 2y. Okay, negative x minus 2y plus z equals 10. Okay, so this is straight out of the, um, it's the actual textbook part. This is example two. Okay, so if we look at this, um, again, I just call these 1, 2, and 3. Um, the x's, these two would eliminate easy. These y's would eliminate easy if you, if you like, subtracted a negative. Um, and then these y's would be pretty easy to eliminate if you multiplied one by two. The z's are a little harder. Mm, let's eliminate the y's. And I only, I could eliminate the x's pretty easy too. Could have gone with either one. Doesn't matter. They're about equal. Um, or, yeah. So, we're going to focus on this first two, eliminating the y. Okay, so I'm just going to use the first two equations, 1 and 2. Um, but notice, when I look at 1 and 2, if I add a 1y and a y, that's going to get a um, positive 2y. I don't get a 0. 1 needs to be negative. 1 needs to be positive. So probably the easiest thing to do is to multiply one of these by negative 1. So I'm going to take negative 1 times uh, by the second equation, and I'm going to write that down. Okay, so, and then I'm going to use equation 1 and 2. Maybe I'll write one down first. x plus y plus 2z equals 3. There's 1. 2 I want to times by negative 1. So the negative, this 2x becomes negative 2x. Positive y becomes negative y. Positive 3z becomes negative 3z. And 7 becomes negative. Now my y will eliminate. So if I'm going to add them down. Right, a big addition. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. The y's eliminate. 2 minus 3 is negative z equals uh, 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Okay, so there's our equation. It has an x and a z. The next one we want to eliminate y in as well. Um, let's just use maybe 1 and 3. And I could have used 2 and 3. That would have been my other option, right? I could do 1 and 2. And I'm going to do 1 and 3. And I might be doing it different than the book, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to write down, and I'm going to look at the 1 and the 3. Okay, this y, we're eliminating the y, has a negative 2, and this one has a 1. So I'm going to need to times this, I need a 2 here for those two to go to 0. So I'm going to times um, 2 times equation 1. And then I have to write that down as I go. So 2 times x, 2x. 2 times y, 2y. 2 times 2 is 4. 
2 times 3 is 6. Okay, there's my first equation. Now the third one is negative x minus 2y plus z equals 10. Now I can add, because I'll get that 0 there on the y that I wanted. 2 minus 1 is 1x. Those ones eliminate. 4 plus 1 is 5z. 10 and 6 is 16. Now, this is the step I didn't have to do those last one. I take the new ones, so we'll just call this 4 and 5. Those are my answers, 4 and 5. And I could now take these two, and I'm going to eliminate the x's, because there's a negative x and a positive x, so they're the easiest. I could have eliminated the z's by plugging, uh, timesing this one by 5, and then those z's would eliminate. But I'm going to stick with the x's, because they're already pretty and ready to be eliminated. Okay, so add down 0, negative 1 plus 5 is 4z, 16 and 4 make 12. Okay, then divide by 4 and z is 3. I got z. Now I use that back substitution. So I had this extra step on this one, right, to match the 5 and 4 the 4 and 5 together. Okay, so now I can use substitution. I'm just going to move this down a little bit. So we can just go, all right, z is 3. So I'm going to go back to negative x minus z. I'm going to put the 3 in there equals negative 14. And I can solve for x. This is just grabbing either equation would have been fine. So add the 3 over, and I get negative x equals negative 14 plus 3 is negative 11. Uh, negative 1 divided over gives us both of those changed to positive, right? They're like dividing by negative 1. So I have x is 11. Um, oops, did I do something wrong? Because I just didn't get... Um, this should be a 4. I was like, wait a second here. I didn't get the right answer. So negative 4. I did a 14. So you guys might have caught that, and I just didn't catch it at first. Okay, the equation I'm using is this one. I don't know where I got a 14. Okay, and then I plugged in the 3 here. So add the 3 over, and you're going to get negative x equals negative 1. So x is positive 1, not, uh, what did I get, 11. Okay, so there's my x. Now to find y or z, or just let's just go back to like maybe the original first equation it said x plus y plus 2z equals 3 that one doesn't have any negatives so it's probably the easiest one to use we know x is 1 we do not know y and we know z is 3 so we have to do our times first 2 times z is 6 so we have 1 plus y plus 6 equals 6 so 1 and 6 make 7, so y plus 7 equals 6. Now I can minus that over and get y is equal to negative 1. Did I do something wrong again? 6, 1, 2, 3. I just didn't get the right answer. 1, x, y, Let's see. Uh... I got negative 4. Okay, let me double check what I did. I wrote down this equation. Uh, z is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. You guys have probably already caught it, and I don't know where. 1. X is 1. Z is 3. X is 1. Z is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. I don't know, maybe they're wrong. I'm not getting their right answer, though. I could they'll easily check their answer. How do they get y is negative 4, 6, 7. Oh, ha! <laughs> you guys probably already saw it. I don't know how my 3 turned to a 6. I was like, I don't want to re-record. I'll find my error. I'm full of errors today. I'd blame all my sickness lately, but that's really not it. So 7, um, minusing the 7 over to the 3 is not negative 1. It would be negative 4. 
All right, so somehow when I chimes the 6 here, I switch that number to a 6 too. All right, moral of that one is watch what you're doing, right? Go slow. Okay, so this is a harder one. This has is most the most steps that you'd have to do. You have to pair two together with and eliminate the same letter on both. Then you pair your answers together to get one of the solutions. Once you have one, you do substitution backward into one of these first and then into one of the originals to get all three letters. Now, if I put X, Y, and Z into these um, original equations, they'll all work. So um, X, Y, Z, you put the numbers in, 1, 3, and negative 4, and you're going to get the right answer. So that's how you check your answer, is put them back in. Hopefully this video kind of helped you with that process, though, because it can get kind of challenging with how many steps you have. And um, some of the answers say use substitution. That's because they already give you one of the answers in the like z equals 4 or z equals x minus 4. They make it easier for you. So substitution, you're basically working backward from the very beginning. So um, don't make those too hard. And if you need help with them, let me know.